Yeah, thanks, Mark. Right, Kev, I, I want to run through a couple of examples we've seen so far in this test match. Yeah. You saw the Supersport Park test and there was plenty going yeah. on with that pitch there. Yeah. How much of playing international test cricket is a mental game? Uh, I was actually commentating on the golf in Johannesburg a, a, a month ago in the South African Open and we were talking about sports in particular. We talked about golf. People said that 90% of golf is mental. And Dale Hayes came on and said, the other 10% is also mental. <laughs> and it's exactly the same with test cricket. It's exactly the same. It is all mental. Yes, talent. Yes, everybody has a work ethic. Everybody has something. But when you can go and practice on the other side of the commentary box here, and then you've got to go and take it into the middle, that's where the good separate themselves from the great. The great are able to really take that on consistency into the middle and perform in the middle. But to answer your question, mental, mental, mental. And how much is that get more complex when you play in these sort of conditions in this series, the first test, and also now at Newlands. Well, that's where, again, it separates the good from the great. How right. well do you travel? Again, golfers, how well do you win on the European Tour, the PGA Tour? Can you win around the world? Something that Ernie Els has done, won all the way around the world. Can a guy like Markram, can a guy like Amla, who has done it, all around the world continue? That's the great players. Markram's starting out in his career. We're going to talk a little bit about Markram. Smart cricketer, clever cricketer, did something really good yesterday. Can he do it all the way around the world? Separates the good from the great. Should the best be able to adapt in these sort of conditions? 100%. You have to be able to adapt because what these guys are not doing at the moment, in uh, the Pakistan team in particular, they've not been able to adapt to these conditions. But can Markram then go to India or go to Dubai, go to Sharjah? Sri can Lanka. he perform there? Sri Lanka, a little bit of a struggle. What can happen? How can they do it? Can they take their practice? But also, do they have enough time to prepare? And that's the big issue in world cricket at the moment. T10, T20, all these leagues. These guys didn't have enough time to prepare for what they've got here. OK, so what we're going to do now is just go through. We're going to step chronologically through this test match so far and look at some of these examples. Now, this was a bit of a clue yesterday when you saw the ball bouncing pretty yeah. much off a good length. Now, this is going through. Just have a look where de Kock is taking these deliveries. Yeah. Yeah, he's taking them up there. So as a batsman, you're thinking, when you come to South Africa or you go travel to Australia, sometimes in England, but not so much in England because they bowl the fuller length. This is a good length. So in South Africa and Australia, that is your perfect length. A little bit too full creates half volleys and scoring opportunities. Those are the good length. But when you travel to South Africa, you travel to Australia, you're thinking about leaving the ball. The best levers of the ball are the ones that actually play the best. They know where the off stump is and they get into a line and they know in that channel I can leave the ball because it's going. The issue is, we've seen now on day two and we also saw at Centurion, and there's a lot of chat about how South Africa is one of the hardest places to bat. Graham Smith talks about it. Elgar yep. said, I should be played double because <laughs> of what I've got to put up with. Day two already here, up and down bounce. Now that's where the mental game really kicks in, Hazy. That's where you've got to be so in control of what's in your head. So if you're a Pakistan teammate and yes. you're watching this, your side is batting, you're yes. up in the, in, the, in the viewing area watching this, yeah. what should be going through your mind when you're seeing this happening early in the test match? Well, I mean, clearly you've got to try and eradicate what delivery gets bowled to you, and if you play and miss at a ball, you've got to let go of that. If you're going to get a good one, you're going to get a good one. But how do you prepare to come into this test match, or how would I prepare to come into this test match? I think about leaving the ball. I'd also think about Abbas. Abbas doesn't have a bouncer, so instead of standing on my popping crease, I'm going to go and stand out here. If I'm standing out here, the square leg umpire has told that umpire, he's standing a meter outside his crease, I'm going to cover my off stump, the wickets are back there, LBW and bold, not even in play. You take those out. Then you start thinking, and that's what Markram did yesterday. Yeah. It's exactly what he did yesterday. He was very clever in his procedure of what he was going to do to Abbas. Did they do that to Philander? I don't think they did that to Philander. But in terms of up and down bounce, Hazy, you can't control that. You've just got to say to yourself, if I get a good one, a good one. Okay, but let's uh, okay. Let's look at Markram. Let's let's jump to that straight away and look yeah. at it. This is Markram's strike points versus Seam yesterday. Yes. And this is with his, his normal stance, where he normally stands inside the crease. This is his normal game. Yep, that's his normal yeah. game. That was against uh, Amir and uh, uh, Afridi to start off with. Then Abbas. And he he's was, made the change. He was yep. As soon as Abbas started to really uh, penetrate on that line, on that length, he made a conscious effort to say, you know what, I'm going to get outside my crease. I think he could have got outside his crease a lot more, but at least he made that change, Hazy, and that's what separates the good from the great, and that's what separates the real good players, the thinking players, and the ones that have that mental capacity to learn quickly, because sometimes you need to learn quickly and adapt. 
plan A, plan B. He said he made that call because he was worried about a bus, in particular getting LBW, and they seriously were working on a plan. He realised as soon as he arrived, because he got LBW twice at Super Bowl Park. Clever, Hazy. Yep. Clever. That's what it is. And you know what? That's a tick. He's a thinking cricketer. What you want as a coach in your team is you want thinking cricketers. You don't want the coach to stand there, Otis Gibson, and say, listen, you, 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 bat a metre outside your crease. You want this, a world-class play, to think, you know what? Actually, it's my wicket. I'm in control of what happens here in this scenario. No one else controls my space. I'm out here, and I'm going to produce. It was quite interesting. Also, Dean Elgar, who always is deep in his crease, he yeah. saw that. He also got out outside his crease as well. So, yeah. so that was quite good to see. What about back earlier in the day? What about these two dismissals? What can you do about this? It was interesting. I was talking to Vicky after this morning. He said that he's been trying to get the guys to get more in line, try and get right-hand side, inside, outside the line of the ball. But he said it's quite difficult. He said it is difficult. Now, sympathise with the Pakistani batsmen. They haven't had time to come to South Africa. They played one warm-up game in Benoni. I mean, what good is that? That's like playing in Sharjah when it doesn't get above the, days, um, yep. above, the, above the knee roll. So yep. these guys haven't had the opportunity to do it. It's like us going to the subcontinent. Do you think we would have been, as an England team, or with the Australians, or with the South Africans, be able to go to Sri Lanka? They'd be able to go to India and perform, having just arrived off, off an aeroplane? It's completely different, and it's alien to these guys. So what you want to see is you want to see courage. You want to see guys uh, actually showing some guts and determination. Yep. Sean Mansur. Beautiful. Terrific. Yep. Beautiful. And, and good at Super Soul Park as well. Absolutely. Can't do much about this, can you? Markram? No, you can't do much about this. Last over of the day, last ball of the day, and we talked it up on commentary as it, it just being horrendous. I remember facing uh, Shivnaran Chanderpaul on, on about 70 at Old Trafford and, and playing against all the West Indian bowlers, and it's that last over, that pressure of play, and it just mentally gets into your head. And <laughs> I mean, Chanderpaul bowled a long hop, full toss. It felt like ringing Wazim Akram and Waka Yunus bowling, just mentally how you had to engage there. But what can you do there? He played beautifully. Was his technique right? His technique was perfect. If he goes to bed last night, he can go, you know what? I was really, really good yesterday. I played beautifully. I got a good ball. And you know what? It's not going to be the last time it happens in his career. Ed Enjoy. Now, there's a factor that's come into play today, and that's this crack. We've been talking about this crack, a little bit of concern for some of the boys about this crack and how that's going to affect proceedings. I mean, just to, to highlight the crack as we just look at uh, Temba just starting to, to settle in there. Yeah. I mean, there's the crack. There it is. I mean, that's, what the, that's what the guys are looking to hit as, as best they possibly can. What are you going to do there? You, see, you, you walk out there, you take guard, you see that, what do you do? Well, it was the first thing I spoke to Graham Smith about. Now, to talk, talk about Graham Smith here at Newlands because he is a wonderful player, he was a brilliant player, and he was magnificent on this ground. But you're going to try and contrast this kind of crack to what you see at the Wacken, and what you see at the Gabba. Now, you can do all the preparation in your, uh, you want, Mikey. When we, us as batsmen go and prepare for a test match here at Newlands or we go to Kingsmead or we go to Barbados or we go somewhere around the world. The wickets need to be perfect so we can get the right manner. The great players, the Rahul Dravids of the world, and spend a lot of time with Rahul Dravid, he used to practice tough. He used to practice incredibly tough. He used to go into a wicket that spun everywhere and do drills of just hitting the ball through the offside. I don't know how you prepare for a crack right down the line of your off stump. I've got no idea how you do it. You've just got to say to yourself, I'm going to get in line, I'm going to try and get outside the line, I'm going to try and get at the bowler, and you know what? If I get a good one and it's got my name on it, good night. Happened. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> it happened twice. It's a little bit short on the crack, but it still hit something. The same well, line. The, the only thing I would say about Hashim Amla is he's too far back, Hazy. If he's a little bit further down, that's hitting, that's hitting his pad. That's not out. Now, OK, yes, it's hitting the wickets. Of course it's hitting the wicket. Would you refer a dismissal with the batsman batting a yard or two yards outside his crease? You're right on the, on the, as the eight-yard little marker. It's the eight-yard marker. You're right there. There's so much indecision there. So far as the captain, he'd know how far he is forward. The square leg umpire knows how far he is. Amla should have been a little bit further out. He doesn't have a bouncer. Right, and just to finish up, the bounce variation on that crack. Now, this is what they're targeting. <laughs> Mohamed Abbas is brilliant. This is to Temba and a couple also to Faf to proceed. Well, I mean, what can you do here? It's the question you asked me. And I'd be stupid and be lying to say, well, you've actually got to get in line. And you go, hey, if you get a good one, there's nothing you can do about it. For this test match, you've just got to understand if one gets you, it gets you. Play your way, but also try and just take out modes of dismissals. The two modes are LBW and bowl. Take those out. If you nick one because it goes away to second slip, Thanks, guys. I'll see you next week at the Wanderers. Okay, KP, thanks very much. We'll go back to, to Mark in the middle as well. 
I think Sean's also there, and, and Sean knows this uh, this venue very well. And I guess he's going to tell us more about that crack and, and what it might do for the rest of the test match as well.